Well, Turkey Day is done, which means we are officially in the Christmas season. And there are two things that happen on the day after Thanksgiving in the Tyrrell house. First, I climb up on the roof and risk life and limb once again as I hang the Christmas lights. And second, we start playing Christmas music pretty much non-stop. Now over the years, Christmas songs have come from a variety of sources. There's traditional church music, songs written for the radio, and even songs written with the help of a class full of second graders in Smithtown, New York. But some of my personal favorites were actually written for classic movies. So pour a big cup of eggnog and sell into a cozy sofa as I walk you through some great Christmas music that we have thanks to the movies. Now the biggest hit on this list, and frankly the biggest selling song of all time, is White Christmas. Irving Berlin had an initial idea for the song while on the set of Top Hat in 1935. He even hummed the tune to Fred Astaire who liked it, but Berlin didn't have the full song ready yet. A few years later, Paramount contracted Berlin to write songs for each of the major holidays that would be featured in their upcoming film, Holiday Inn. Now, Irving Berlin had the most trouble trying to write the Christmas song for the movie. That was until one night when he revisited the theme he had created years earlier and began to add lyrics to it. By the time he was done, Berlin claimed he knew it was the best song he had ever written and felt it might be the best song anyone had ever written. Holiday Inn star Bean Crosby began performing the song in late 1941 and even performed a version of it on his radio show that year. The following May, Crosby recorded the studio version of the song to be included in the soundtrack for Holiday Inn. Now originally, the song was supposed to be sung by Crosby's co-star Marjorie Reynolds, but was eventually shot as a duet with Crosby. And children listen to hear Bells in the snow. Now another song from the film, Be Careful It's My Heart, was expected to be the big hit from the movie. But by October 1942, White Christmas made its way to the top of the pop charts and quickly became a Christmas favorite, reaching the number one spot again and again over several years during the holidays. In particular, the song was a huge hit with soldiers overseas and with their families here at home during World War II. This impact was even dramatized 12 years later during the early scene in Bing Crosby's White Christmas, where Bing sings to the troops in Europe on Christmas Eve 1944. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Now the version we hear most Just often on the radio today is not the original 1942 Holiday Inn version, or even the 1954 White Christmas version. The original master for the 1942 version had become so worn out from use that in 1947, Bing went back into the studio with the same orchestra and the same backing singers and recreated the 1942 version as closely as they could. And that 1947 recording is what we most often hear today. Our next song made its debut in 1944 in Meet Me in St. Louis. Now the song was designed as a sad ballad that Judy Garland sings to comfort her little sister, played by Margaret O'Brien, as their family prepares to move from their beloved St. Louis to New York City. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Though Ralph Blaine received co-writer credits, Hugh Martin later claimed that he wrote the lyrics and the music for the song all on his own. So when Judy Garland and director Vincent Minnelli had issues with the first drafts of the song, they knew exactly who to go to. The issues they had were that the song was originally much sadder and darker than the one we know today. Take this line as an example. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. It may be your last. Faithful friends who are dear to us will be near to us no more. Even Martin later admitted that the original lyrics were hysterically dismal. Even so, Martin was stubborn about his lyrics. Judy Garland and Vincent Minnelli got him thinking about making some edits, but it was actually actor Tom Drake who pushed him into action. Drake pulled Martin aside and told him he was a stupid son of a bitch who was going to mess up his life if he didn't write a new verse for the song. After the movie was released, the song didn't really catch on as a popular Christmas song. It wasn't until Frank Sinatra's recording of it in 1957 that it started to get a lot of radio airplay. 
but even with this version, Sinatra wanted to lighten the song up even more. One specific line Sinatra didn't like was the, we'll have to muddle through somehow part. Martin came up with the idea to change that line to, hang a shining star upon the highest bow instead, which helped to brighten the song up a bit more. Sinatra's 1957 version was a hit and made Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas an annual favorite. Since then, the song has been recorded more than 500 times, and most, but not all, use Sinatra's Hang a Shining Star version of the song. But next time you hear the song, listen for which version that singer chose. In addition to being the songwriter for Guys and Dolls, Frank Lesser sounds like he was a pretty great guest to have at your parties as well. As an example, Lesser and his wife Lynn Garland performed our next song on our list for years at friends' parties. The song is the classic comic duet, Baby It's Cold Outside. The story goes that the song was actually written for a specific party, a housewarming party at a hotel in New York City. The song was designed to close out the night and indicate to the guests that it was time to go home. Lynn Garland reported that after the first performance, they were instant hits and started getting invitations to all the best parties. But all that came to an end about four years later when Lesser sold the song to MGM to be used in the Esther Williams aqua musical, Neptune's Daughter. In the movie, Esther Williams sings the song with Ricardo Montalban, playing the part of the man who doesn't want his date to go home. I really can't stay. But baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been hoping that you drop so in. So very nice. I'll hold your hands. They're just like ice. My mother will. But for the final verse, the scene shifts over to a similar scene with Red Skelton and Betty Garrett, with Betty Garrett playing the aggressor part and Red Skelton trying to get out of the apartment. Very nice. I'll hold your hands. They're just like My mother will start. Just like the performances at the parties, the song was an immediate hit and even went on to win the Academy Award for Best Original Song in 1949. And since then, it's been recorded by dozens of singers and has even appeared in other Christmas movies, including Zoe De Chanel and Will Ferrell's version in Elf. The final song on my list is Silver Bells, which has the distinction of becoming such a big hit right before the movie actually went into the theaters that a studio decided to reshoot the scene the song was featured in to take advantage of the song's brand new popularity. Of course, a popular Christmas song is exactly what Paramount wanted when they hired songwriters Jay Livingston and Ray Evans to write the song for their upcoming feature, The Lemon Drop Kid. The film was based on the Damon Runyon story about a big city confidence man and Bob Hope and Marilyn Maxwell had already been cast in the lead roles. Now for years, the inspiration for the song was said to be the Salvation Army Santa Clauses who ring their bells for donations on New York City street corners. But in a later interview, Ray Evans said the real inspiration was a little bell that sat on the desk that he and Livingston shared. Now the original title for the song wasn't Silver Bells, but was actually Tinkle Bells. And the duo was pretty happy with that title until Livingston went home and told his wife about the song. She thought they were out of their minds. It seems the songwriters never knew that Tinkle was sometimes used as a polite way to say someone was using the bathroom. They quickly changed the title to Silver Bells. Now the scene in The Lemon Drop Kid was shot during late summer of 1950 and about a month later, Hope's good friend Bing Crosby recorded his version of the song with Carol Richards. Their recording was released in October, just in time for the holidays, and became a big hit. It was such a big hit that Bob Pope and Marilyn Maxwell were called back to the set to film a more elaborate production of the song. Silver Bells, is good. Silver Bells, be gory, but you're cute. It's Christmas time in the city. And that's the scene that audiences saw when they saw the film in the theaters the following March. And there you have it, four classic Christmas songs that came from the movies. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I'll be talking about some of my favorite Christmas movies throughout December. So if you'd like to be sure to get a notification when a new video goes live, please be sure to click on that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again here soon on A Million Movies.